Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to quickly go over the installation and usage of the Rygard Skin Pack, which is free from a longtime 3 d Coat user and contributor on the forums. I will provide a link to this page in the description below. So let's go ahead and get started by scrolling down a bit on this page. And we can click download here. It will take you to his Gumroad page. Now, he has also provided a wealth of free video content as well. If you would like to say thank you to him, you can always add a donation here if you like. Wherever you have downloaded the file to, you can right click and choose to extract it. The instructions to install this is also on the page if you need to go back and review it for any reason. I will go to 3D Coat now. Starting with the file menu, go down to install and then pick install extension. We want to locate that file, which is a 3DC pack file. Click on that and you'll get a prompt after it's been installed to restart 3D Coat so that it can refresh the brush panel. Once you've restarted in the Sculpt workspace, you'll see a custom brush called Rygard Apply Details. And it has different settings here in the Tool Options panel that are ideal for applying these types of very fine surface level details. But you could also use the Extrude Brush and just pick from the Brush Alpha panel. You would want to select the subfolder for this skin pack. I will also go to the Windows menu under Panels. I can bring brushes up. We have a few different options for accessing our brushes. We can dock it to a more preferred location. We can go through the Activity Bar, as you see me doing here. Or we can also leave it free floating in the viewport, which I will go ahead and rescale now. Before I get started, I want to do a little bit of a pre-flight checklist, if you will. Because right now, I don't have the right layer selected, so I need to do that now. Check. And then I want to look in the upper left-hand corner at this little icon, and that tells me what draw mode from the e-panel I'm in. But I could hit the E key to bring the e-panel to me. In this instance, I want to use the brush alpha as a stamp. I could brush and have it repeat the pattern. And I could even have it use jitter to randomize the pattern as I brush. But in this case, I want to apply one instance at a time. So let's go ahead and click the stamp draw mode. The other one is really useful in some circumstances, this movable stamp, because it essentially imprints or it applies it in an interactive fashion and you can actually change it. Let me just go ahead and do that now. So I can see a, a preview with my brush as I hover over the area. Let's go here in the shoulder region and right click and drag to the right to scale my brush up a bit. You can also increase the fall off. Okay, so I'll go ahead and click. I can move this around so I get an interactive view of what that's going to look like. I can continue pressing down with my left mouse button or stylus while I hit the right bracket key to increase the scale. I want to go up a bit more. Yep. And then just above that on the keyboard, I can hit the nine or the zero key in order to rotate it to the left or to the right. If I'm satisfied with a preview, I can simply just release the pressure from my stylus. That was the movable stamp draw mode, and now I'm going to try the regular stamp draw mode. Let me undo that last attempt. So I'm going to create a new layer. Double click that layer to rename it. SL for sculpt layer, and then skin. I will increase the depth level a bit more. To begin, I will left mouse button click in the center of the area I want to apply the stamp to. Then I can drag to the right to increase the scale or to the left to decrease it. I can also drag my cursor up or down to rotate it left or right. And release. Okay. 
I can always go back and modify either locally or across the entire layer, the depth level here by adjusting the depth of opacity locally. I can use the magnify brush here for scope layers. And that will allow me to either increase the depth level under my brush or decrease it. So I'm just lightly touching up this area because I could see that it was not blending the way I wanted it to. The brush fall off was a bit too high, perhaps, and that can sometimes lead to visible gaps in between the areas where you have applied stamps. So I can just touch that up lightly. In this one area, I can go back and correct that one spot. Hold down the control key to bring it back down. The degree of change, I'm going to reduce that a bit. I'm going to hold down the control key and just lightly touch in some of these other areas as well. And with that, we will conclude this look at the Rygard Applied Details brush and the 68 brush alphas that go with it. Thank you for watching, and we will see you in the next video.